Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Right, today we've got a different sort of list for you. Now the words hidden gem are quite overused, let's yep. be fair. So we thought we'd change it ever so slightly. These games are what we're going to call rough diamonds. Now our definition of a rough diamond is a game that were we reviewing it, we would say something along the lines of, if you can look past this one floor, we would recommend you get this game. Mm -hmm. So they're games that have one aspect that hold it back, but otherwise they're very good games. Yeah, and not an aspect that's game breaking. It's not, not like absolutely. if you can look past the fact it's absolute crap. <laughs> no, it may be, just to clarify, that's a good point. Slightly too expensive for what yeah. you get, a little too short, frame rate issues, loading times, etc. etc. Et Let's jump into the list. First game that I want to mention is one that I absolutely loved and I played it predominantly in handheld mode and it's Pillars of Eternity and the developers, I think it's Versus Evil, they took a long long time getting that patch to us but the patch is now finally here. It's not perfect still, there are still a few little quirks in there but it's such a good game underneath it all. There would be just weird inventory quirks, so like visual ones and there's just, and I'm, I must admit, I saw a couple, and I just saw, I thought it was just me. I was right. like, I saw a little bit and I thought, my brain just didn't register. Hang on, that doesn't match up with what that says. Okay. So just a few little, quite weird quirks. Some of your magical abilities when you use them, when you actually looked and thought, has this actually had an effect? It wasn't having an effect. So when people dug down into it, there were just a lot of things that were pretty broken. Right, a few little glitches and whatnot. Glitchiness, yeah. yeah. But now it's a lot better. It's still going to be improved. And I'd say it's worth playing. Okay. Right, my first one is one that many people may not have even heard of. It's a small little puzzle game on the eShop. It's called Miniature The Story Puzzle. Now, the basic idea is that you have a, a diorama set up, um, so it's like a model set up with little plastic people, and you have to flip between uh, each scene, and then you have to take photos of it and piece the story together. Okay. It's a really fun little puzzle game. Quite cheap, it goes for £3.59 over here. It's on sale at the minute for less than a pound. The problem is there are only 12 puzzles and you can finish it in about an hour. So it left me wanting more. Sometimes you have your feel of a game and that's enough. I wanted more of this game. It's lovingly crafted. It's really interesting concept. There's just not enough of it. So a sequel, that's what they could do with it. My next choice is Remothered, which was on PC. A very good horror game and yeah. I'm not normally a horror fan. Mm. But when we first loaded it up on the Switch, my goodness did this thing look terrible. They've patched it up since, but it's still, I wouldn't say performance is perfect by any means, but it's playable now and the core horror story is decent. Mm. It's very well done. Mm. It almost reminds me of like playing as Scully, like you're this female protagonist to enter in this, this old house with mm. this very unusual family, you know, the usual cliches. But it's really well done. I like the way it's handled and now the performance is okay. It actually has, a, it's a trilogy. Oh, there you go. And there are two of the three out on the Switch with the third on its way, I believe as well. Didn't know that. Mm. There you go. Right, my next pick then would be the Ghostbusters game that's come out on the Switch recently. Um, was originally uh, an Xbox 360 PS3 game. Mm -hmm. Now, I really enjoyed this one. I think I gave it 80 odd percent, maybe just under 70, high 70s in my review. The issue I have with it is that it doesn't contain motion controls or gyro aiming to be mm. precise. Now, I'm not a huge fan of motion controls. I can take them or leave them. But in this game, where you're holding a proton pack, it just made sense. The Wii version of this game back in the day had motion controls and I would have seen this is a perfect time to take the best elements of that game, uh -huh. the best elements of this game and merge them into the definitive edition yeah. and they haven't done that which is a shame but otherwise, great game, that's just something that let it down for me. And I do love gyro controls. You do, yeah absolutely, I'm sure there are many that do and this game's just perfect for them and doesn't have them. Next one for me is Vampire which is a brilliant game, I think it was Focus Home Interactive who did the port for this one, those guys have been absolutely cane in it. <laughs> It's a very good game. You control a doctor who becomes a vampire, but he still carries on as a doctor. Okay. And you've got this kind of, you're torn between the two worlds, you know. Right. It's really a nice title. It's got a couple of flaws which detract from the overall experience on Switch. One affects all versions, which is the combat is just so-so. Mm, mm. The other one is the frame rate isn't great in some of the later areas on the Nintendo Switch version. And the visuals obviously aren't going to be as good as other versions. Mm. I love having this handheld. I think it's it's a great game to play handheld. But there are a couple of flaws there that are going to potentially put some people off. It's still a very good game regardless. What I'd say about this one is that there is a physical version mm -hmm. and it is slowly creeping down in price. So it may just be one to keep, keep your eye on for that, yeah. 
Well, next one then would be Northgard, which is a real-time strategy game uh, with a, a Viking setting. Really good game. Unfortunately, it has some quite bad frame rate issues. Now, mm. in this type of game, it's not the biggest deal in the world. It doesn't affect the gameplay, but it's still unfortunate. It feels like, um, or you said to be fair, it might be a memory leak, didn't you? Yeah, it, it doesn't look like something that should be that difficult. I mean, we've seen the games that run on Switch, it looks, the way it stutters, yeah. like it stops, it's like it's loaded in textures and That's things right. like that. Yeah, so as you're playing every so often, as you say, it will stutter and it will stop. It doesn't affect the game, and it is a very good game, it's just unfortunate. Yeah. Next up is my time at Porsche, and I really want to make a list of the best kind of farming games on yeah. Switch. I really enjoy them. I think they're great. Mm. Let me know down in the comments if you'd watch that. <laughs> <laughs> now, My Time at Porsche is another example of a very, very good farming simulator that has a lot of RPG mechanics built around it. However, the loading times are unbelievable. Mm. They, when, <laughs> when it first launched, the loading time to get into the game, it was like five minutes from when you hit the button to start to actually sit in it. It might have even been longer, including those first few screens. Wow. It's a bit better now. It is a little bit better now. It's still not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And once you're in the game, it's not too much of a problem, apart from when you go out to your house, and then there's a huge loading screen to get into your house, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. So, I was sorry, I was just gonna say, it sounds very similar to a game I've played called uh, Little Dragon's Cafe. Yes. In that every time you walk into your house, there's a loading screen, every time you come back out, it's like, so it's, again, that's a very good game, I enjoyed mm -hmm. that, but it's just frustrating, isn't it? Really is, yeah. yeah. Another one I wanna talk about is Phantom Doctrine, which is an XCOM-style game. Now, I wouldn't say this has any huge flaws, however, it is, the graphics aren't great. Like the, it was one of those where the eShop trailer kind of looked wow, and then you get in there and you're like, hmm, okay, this mm. isn't quite what the doctor ordered. Yeah, yeah. But it's still a decent game. It's got very good core gameplay, an interesting kind of like James Bondy kind of like espionage. Brilliant, a great word. <laughs> Keep that. It's got an excellent espionage style storyline behind everything, mm. and yeah, it's got solid core mechanics. It's just the visuals are a little bit jank. Yeah. Okay, my next one then is Snooker 19. Now, if you don't like snooker games, then obviously this won't appeal to you anyway, but for what this is, it's actually a fantastic representation of the sport. Mm. Um, the, diff or the problem with it, I, I find at least, is that the AI, is the difficulty is so high that there's a very high point of entry. Even if you know of snooker and you know the rules, it's still very hard to, to get on board with. Yeah. I feel they should have included a tutorial, not even necessarily to teach you the rules of snooker, mm -hmm. but just to show you how to execute some of the shots in game. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And just make some of the lower ranked players a little less good, basically, just to, just to ease you in a little bit more. Okay, the last title is a game that we didn't review on the channel, we did an everything you need to know about it, mm. and that's Bullet Storm featuring Duke Nukem. That's right, yeah. Now, this was an excellent game, really enjoyed the first person mechanics, it had a lot of things that I'd want in there, like gyro controls. However, it didn't have multiplayer, which was a big issue, seeing as that was on other versions of the title. So, if you can get around the fact that it doesn't have multiplayer, let's be honest, there probably wouldn't be anyone on there on the Switch no, anyway. No, well, this is true, yeah. Um, but yeah, that and the slightly iffy story make this a bit of a rough diamond. I think as well, uh, because the Duke Nukem character was like a, an extra yeah. added to this or to, to later versions of the game, I think they just plonked him in and he just took the main protagonist's yeah. lines. Yeah. So it just doesn't feel like he it's just should weird, be there at it? all. It's just it's like, strange. he's died! <laughs> He's like, damn, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. like, what? You should be. Yeah. Shoot, no, there you go. Yeah. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks for watching the list, guys. I really like this idea. This was this man over here's idea, and yeah, it's a good idea, that. It's just a good idea to showcase, or a nice way to showcase games that are not perfect, but they're yeah, fun enough to, to purchase, aren't they? You know, I, I'd watch this. Absolutely. I will. <laughs> if you're new to the channel, then please do consider subscribing. Say hello down in the comments. Remember, we give away free games each month just because. I need to put that community post up for the Western game, so I'll do that yes, today. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Quick thank you to our patrons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Much appreciated. Take care and uh, happy gaming. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya! Loves it. Every <laughs> time, just mmm. <laughs>
put the spin dryer on. Put the spin dryer on. Of course, it's the perfect time to put the spin dryer on. I'm recording. I'm going to put the spin dryer on. Why wouldn't you? Listen to it. It's very noisy, Bet. Well, you one, you got the spin dryer on. <laughs> Two, you keep playing like dance music. Can we just have five minutes of quiet ish quietness? Oh, the whole house is rumbling now. <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, there we go. Quick, quick. <clears throat> okay.